Hello, BookTube. Well, I'm obviously incorrigible. I have fallen into the habit of reading you a poem every day instead of just reserving them for Poetry Thursday, and I think I'm going to continue to do that for the rest of the week. Who knows? I might read you a poem every day for the rest of time. <laughs> It's my channel, after all. So we are we are bouncing around between, I have a half a dozen poetry anthologies here, and we're bouncing around between them, just to, as my whim takes me. Uh, and we are back to one of the greatest poetry anthologies of all time. This is the Oxford Book of English Verse. This is the Helen Gardner edition. No offense meant to the great Quiller Cooch, who started off the Oxford Book of English Verse, but his version of this was very idiosyncratic. It was a very personal uh, representation of the poems that he liked. Now that makes it interesting. That certainly makes it worthy of a Penguin Classic volume of its own with a long glowing introduction. But the idea of what a poetry anthology should be was rapidly growing right past Quiller Cooch to be something that represents, you know, many people, not just poems to the author's taste. Of course, the, author, the editor's tastes are going to be a guiding rudder for the thing. They're not going to totally dominate it, you know. Uh, and this, I think, makes for a better poetry anthology. And we're going to move on today to uh, a poet who died in the 1970s. This is Edmund Blunden. Uh, and the poem is called Forefathers. So I want to make sure I've got a good grip on the book here. We're, this is called Forefathers. And this uh, is not all that long. So here we go. This is by Edmund Blunden. Here they went with smock and crook, toiled in the sun, lolled in the shade. Here they mudded out the brook, and here their hatchet cleared the glade. Harvest supper woke their wit, huntsman's moon their wooing lit. From this church they led their brides, from this church themselves were led, shoulder high on these waysides, sat to take their beer and bread. Names are gone, what men they were, these their cottages declare. Names are vanished, save the few in the old brown Bible scrawled. These were men of pith and few, whom the city never called, scarce could read or hold a quill, built the farm, the forge, the mill. On the green they watched their sons, playing till too dark to see, as their fathers watched them once, as my father once watched me. While the bat and beetle flew, and the warm air webbed with dew. Unrecorded, unrenowned, Men from whom my wars begin, here I know you by your ground, but I know you not within. There is silence, there survives not a moment of your lives. Like the bee that now is blown, honey heavy on my hand, from his topping tansy throne in the green tempestuous land, I'm the clover now, nor know who made honey long ago. Uh, I think, first I want to mention how beautiful this is it's the the rhyme scheme is ripples like like a, a little brook that you find in a forest it ripples it's it's end rhyme oriented but not end rhyme strictured it's not it's not corseted by its end rhymes instead they flow with the pattern and it's that is lovely when uh, when a poet has both the skill and the confidence to do that some of the the, the shadings here are just gorgeous uh uh, while the bat and beetle flew on the warm air webbed with dew, that's lovely, absolutely lovely. And you would never think of it on your own. You would never think of, doom, of dew accumulating in the twilight as webbing. That is just lovely. Same thing with, uh, with the, uh, the bee, like the bee that now is blown honey heavy on my hand from his toppling tansy throne in the green tempestuous land. I'm in clover now, nor know who made honey long ago. Just lovely. What the what the poem, the gist of the poem, the main import of it, is that you can see the relics of these men who made my wars, but of their interiority I know nothing at all. The names are scrawled in old Bibles, the names are etched on old cottages, but the people themselves? The most you can do to recover what we now in the 21st century call their interiority is to do what the narrator of the poem does, which is to project his own present day back on them. They must have watched their children as my father watched me. They must have done that. Maybe, therefore, those old forefathers uh, thought the same thing about watching their children as I did. Maybe they were preoccupied with all the same things that I am, even though the narrator of the poem is obviously not one of these type of people. He's obviously been educated. So he, he his hand has held the quill many times, whereas the characters he's talking about have not. One little echo here. 
it's not actually an echo. I believe it's the sound that is then later echoed by A.E. Hausman. When we mentioned that uh, from this church they led their brides, from this church themselves were led shoulder high, meaning in a coffin. Uh, and that is that seems to me, it seems to me that A.E. Hausman probably knew that line quite well when he wrote To an Athlete Dying Young, where the same imagery is invoked, shoulder high, we bear you now, where, where there it's heartbreakingly contrasted where the narrator of the poem is remembering a glorious athletic youth who, when he won the market race, we cheered you on our shoulders through the town. And now we we bear you shoulder high, townsman of a stiller town. Hausman does a lot better. He does a lot more with that imagery than Blunden does here, but I bet this is where he got it. The, that idea that we, we, we carry you shoulder high. Lovely in any case. Uh, so just, just a beautiful thing, a meditation, uh, that uh, doesn't have a whole lot of, it would never get, you know, anthologized now, because the, the, the poem makes explicit mention of how these forefathers cleared the land. Well, who'd they clear it from, right, would be the, would be the first question that the 21st century would ask, so you would never re-anthologize re this poem. But I thought it was lovely. I wanted to read it to you because I encountered it just this morning. And who knows what I'll encounter tonight that I'll want to read to you tomorrow. Tomorrow is actually Poetry Thursday, so we got to read something then. But I might just continue. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this up, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.